There is a renewed effort to change the name of McKinley High School and remove the statue of its namesake. Supporters of the campaign cite President McKinley's role in the illegal annexation of Hawaii as grounds for the change, while opponents point to school pride and tradition as reasons for keeping the name. Should the state change the name of Oahu's oldest public high school? Tonight's broadcast and live stream of insights on PBS Hawaii start now. Aloha and welcome to Insights on PBS Hawaii. I'm Daryl Huff. A resolution to urge the Board of Education to change the name of President William McKinley High School back to its original name of Honolulu High School and to remove McKinley's statue from the campus is set to be introduced at the state legislature. Honolulu High School's name was changed to McKinley High School back in 1907 and the statue was installed in 1911. The resolution introduced last session stated that the school name is a symbol to perpetuate the subjugation of Native Hawaiians. A petition to keep the name argues that a name change would disrupt traditions and practices students look forward to every year and slight the alumni who have graduated as McKinley Tigers. This issue has already been a cause for passionate arguments on both sides. Should McKinley High School change its name? We look forward to your participation in tonight's show. You can email us or call us with your questions. We also encourage you to get involved with our conversation on our Facebook page. Now to our guests. Representative Amy Peruso spent most of her career as a high, high school public school studies teacher. She has served on the governor's blueprint for educational task force and is currently serving her second term as a representative for the district covering Wahiwa, Whitmore Village, and Poamoho in central Oahu. Ron Okamura is the current principal at McKinley High School. He has spent 35 years working in the Hawaii Department of Education. He attended the University of Hawaii at Manoa where he received a bachelor's in secondary education and a master's in educational administration. Kainoa Ozama is a youth advocate and is currently the chair of the Honolulu Youth Commission. He's also president of the Junior Ko'olau Poku Hawaiian Civic Club, a member of the international organization Heirs to Our Oceans, and the steering committee member for Kaleo Ona Upio. And Chance Na'awa, I knew I was going to blow it right off the beginning, Chance Na'awa, Na'awa, Ota. Chance Na'awao Ota graduated from McKinley High School in 2018. He currently is the secretary for the Liliha Pu'unui Eleva Heights and Kamehameha Heights Neighborhood Board. Uh, let me start with you, Representative Peruso, as, as the former introducer of this resolution. Why, why would you want to change something like this that's been in place for so long? What's the, what's the argument for getting rid of that statue and changing the name? I... I, I want to say that I came to this issue from a particular background. So as a veteran social studies teacher and civics teacher, um, I, I think that truth telling is really important. It's important for our students and it's important for our schools. And um, over the course of my uh, career as an educator, I, I found that um, it's often in the most difficult conversations um, that we're able to find some transformation and some healing. So our intention in introducing this resolution, which had been introduced in 2006, um, reintroducing it and, and revisiting that discussion was really to respond to the community um, entreaties for some kind of um, resolution and some kind of recognition of the the harm that they felt emanating from that name and from the statue. And I think that's what we're going to talk about this evening. So I'm really grateful for this opportunity. I think it's important. Uh, Chance Nawal, what, what's your position on this? And um, I understand you you want to keep the statue there. Do you have others tell, people telling you that it's hurtful to them? Or how do you respond to that? I haven't um, experienced people saying that, you know, it's hurtful. That doesn't mean it's not there, of course. It is. Um, but what, how I would respond to that is the fact that it's been a part of not only, you know, my life. It's been a huge highlight of my life, personally, but also hundreds of thousands of other um, people, community members, especially alumni, teachers, students, parents, um, who have worked with McKinley High School, and especially since we're a nationally renowned school. 
I think it's important to keep that identity. I'm going to ask uh, Kaido Azama, um, how do you feel when you see that statue standing there? Well, I feel I feel it represents um, just this continue the continued narrative of his story rather than history. What does that statue hold? It holds a treaty of annexation, something that never happened. We never had, there never was a ratification of the Treaty of Annexation. And it, it continues to embody um, the memory of our continued oppression and the continued injustices that are ongoing as a result of the original lie, the original myth. And it really ties into us really calling for this, ties into what um, Representative Perusa had said previously, we really need to enter the path and journey of healing. Um, and that's what really drawed me here today. Um, Ron Okamura, a McKinley High School principal, um, which, another educator on this panel has just said that it's it just doesn't re represent truth. Um, how do you respond to that, and um, why do you feel strongly about not changing this? Well, you know, for me, it, it, it's a lot of things that, that come to mind. I'm also a social studies major and teacher as well, too. So, you know, history is important. And, you know, what we strive to do as educators is also giving both sides of the story. Um, you know, it is, you know, looking at Hawaiian history, looking at the U.S. history, um, what's entailed, what's had taken place. Um, we want to give our students the biggest perspective of, of both sides of what the argument is about and let them come up with their own, you know, decisions on how they want to they want to carry on with that. Um, I think for me, one of the biggest things about, you know, looking at you know, a school like, you know, President William McKinley High School, um, it's not necessarily being President William McKinley High School, but it's about being McKinley High School as a brand. Um, you know, uh, Chance kind of hit upon it that, you know, there are thousands, you know, um, of alumni and community members that really took it, take a look at this school and, and look at the, the, the types of students that have come from this school. Um, all the leaders in Hawaii, you know, both pol uh, political and business and military, um, you know, it's it's the common bond. And I think part of our whole local culture is, you know, looking at your high school as part of your being of who you are. Um, we want to make sure that history talks about both sides, you know, um, and, you know, Chance has some, has some information about looking at the, the resolutions and and treaties and whatever have you that has come about and as part of this. But I think the bigger issue is that, you know, when I look at it from my standpoint, um, do you really want to change, you know, what history is? Do you want to take away and erase certain aspects of it without telling both sides of the story? And I think that's made me kind of stand up and think, you know what, as not only as an educator, but as a citizen, an American citizen, I think we need to present both sides of the story, let everybody come out and, and make their own decisions, but let the decision be at the school where it, where it belongs, about really, you know, this is our school. This is many, many thousands of, of alumni who have graduated. This is their school. Okay, thank And let you. them be the ones to make that decision for us. Okay, let me ask Amy Peruso, just give us a little history lesson here, though. What was McKinley's role in particular that makes him sort of a flashpoint for, for this debate? So um, he was, his election, election was um, untimely in the sense that um, the overthrow had already um, been, and the American, America, American military involvement in the overthrow had already been um, denounced by President Cleveland. And we were, I think on a path towards resolution and um, restoration of Hawaiian sovereignty. And the election of President of, of William McKinley, who was um, an avowed imperialist, and and if you read his writings, a, a clear racist, um, really shifted the possibilities. So um, there were multiple efforts to push through um, a treaty of annexation through Congress, all failed. And so given the failure of those efforts, he then uh, proceeded to, after the declaration of the Spanish American War, which is another act of empire building, um, then proceeded to push through a joint resolution, which should have no uh, binding effect on another country. It's an act of Congress. So 
Um, I, I think there are multiple points um, in this process that uh, in which McKinley's actions are, um, you know, not those that we should honor. So I, I, I hear Principal Okamura talking about the value of looking at both sides, but I think that naming and erecting statues is about honoring. And I think we really need to be careful about how we do that. And, and I think that also uh, McKinley High School has an opportunity to, as part of their brand, as part of their identity, to, to become a key linchpin in this process of reconciliation. They can be the leaders here. Let me, uh, Chance Nawal, uh, uh, the principal suggested I go to you to get a little bit of, what's your historic uh, perspective on this? I mean, um, was McKinley uh, as influential in this process? What's your spin on, on that, that part of the argument? Well, with, regarding the annexation of Hawaii, yes, McKinley was the president to annex Hawaii, but the overthrow started with the um, safety committee during Hawaii, a committee of 13 members, um, all businessmen who worked to overthrow Queen Liliokalani. Um, and then from that, it, yes, she's right. Um, president Harrison actually came out, um, invited Sanford B. Dole saying, oh, we are welcome to annex Hawaii. But then after that, the next year, I believe Cleveland got in. And that's where um, Representative Bruso was referencing where Cleveland got in and we're on a path towards, we were on a path towards um, reconciliation and healing per her words. But the Congress um, at that time, they put, to, they put forth a vote as to whether or not they should relinquish the power back to the queen because to stop the bloodless revolution in 1983, which was the overthrow, um, the queen relinquished her power in her letter to the president, um, to the Congress, until such time that they granted it back to her. And then that was something that Cleveland put forth, but it that vote died in Congress, sadly. And then, and I, then and I think that at that point, um, Congress passed a, a resolution. It was just a majority vote that McKinley ultimately signed. But yeah, there's no question there was a real political football going back and forth between Republicans and Democrats back even then. Let me let me go to our viewers now. We're getting quite a number of of, of questions. Um, two, two, two callers uh, along the same theme here. If the South can get rid of Confederate statues and respect the country's true history, why not McKinley? That's from Rich and Honolulu. And Brian Davis from Kapa'a, I consider removal of the statue and renaming of the school to be equivalent to removal of Civil War statues and renaming the military force forts. Um, uh, Kainoa Azama, do you see that parallel? The, is this Hawaii's, you know, Civil War moment? I would say there's definitely, um, to some degree, parallels. I mean, I don't want to speak too much towards their issues as how they deal with their own healing processes um, for their story. But for ours, it's definitely a step to what um, Representative Proust was talking about of getting some degree of justice. You know, we, we're really bringing, because I know there's also that stigma of cancel culture, but one of the issues is for us in Hawaii, because we all have our own sort of story is we're the culture that got canceled first. Um, the loss of Honolulu High, which kind of, which was one of its former names into um, President William McKinley High School, you know, we're losing our identity, we're losing our connection to place, and rather now having an identity where we're identifying with individuals who have committed extreme injustices in our communities. Um, so really what this is about for me is rebuilding that sense of belonging for everybody. You know, we're not unwriting history, you know, that story about President William McKinley High School is always going to be there, but what is the future going to look like? That's the story that's yet to be told. And that's the story that we're writing now because history is constantly unfolding. So how do we bring back to some degree justice for our people, justice for what, because there's so much question of what's in a name. And for us, it's that continued memory um, of what's happened. And we need to, one of the things our kupuna teach us is when it comes to replacing memories, we always replace certain things with, um, something of equal to our greater value and what is of greater value than connecting to our sense of place again because we've lost that relationality you know um uh principal ron okamura from mckinley high school i, I want to bounce a couple of thoughts 
um, off of you because you did mention the idea of having both sides or teaching multiple sides, and, and certainly this is an instructive conversation. Uh, Vanessa, a 1972 McKinley graduate, I'm half Hawaiian, I understand both sides, but I don't see the need to change the name as long as the education is being taught correctly. And another caller, Vanessa, oh, it's another Vanessa, I may have the same <laughs> Vanessa. I support removing <laughs> McKinley's name and statue, however, considering the name change requires considerable expense, I feel like it should have more profound meaning and considers, why don't you call it Queen Lili Okolani High School instead of Honolulu High School? But I'm going to the point of, you mentioned, how do you at McKinley teach both sides? I mean, do are people getting both sides or, or are there two sides? Some people would say there, there aren't two sides to this. Well, it's not necessarily two sides. It's about history itself, you know, talking about, you know, this is the events that had taken place. Um, you know, in, in high school, there's a modern history of Hawaii course. Um, and as you go down to the middle schools, you know, there, there's like modern history of Hawaii, I mean, um, you know, Pacific Island history. So then Hawaiian monarchy. So it kind of goes back to that. It, it's talking about, and especially in modern history of Hawaii, it's talking about the whole movement um, from, you know, the big five and people come in here to, you know, look at agriculture as, um, you know, a good basis for economy, a base of economy here in the islands, as well as a military standpoint. So, you know, you give them all those aspects of, of details and, you know, it's it's there, it's for there to to make interpret. And the one thing good about history and social studies, you know, it it invokes a lot of these uh, discussions. Um, so that's people do, you know, have opinions and do have feelings about certain things, um, you know, that are impacting where they live. Um, you know, my thing that I, I always bring up and, you know, it, they always talk about the statue, removing of the statue, um, changing the names of, of and the message went out that it's not only McKinley High School, there's other schools that are on that here, you know, that they want to be targeting. Um, the big question is, where does it end? Um, who's that? Who makes the determination of whose statue, whose names get to be, you know, kept and whose ones get to be taken out and changed? Um, that to me comes down to a local body decision um, as far as who is impacted directly from uh, what's taking place. Um, my stance has always been, you change one, you change all. So that, that's, an, that's an interesting point. And Amy Peruso, I mean, if if imperialism is the issue and colonization is the issue, isn't mm -hmm. Roosevelt High School next? You know, I think that, um, I mean, logically, there is a connection. Um, but I would say that McKinley is particularly important um, in terms of that larger conversation, because Mc, uh, President McKinley was such an egregiously bad actor, um, and he had impacts not just in Hawaii, but in the Philippines and across the Pacific. I mean, he, in the Spanish-American War, although he died in 1901, he still had a, disaster to, a disastrous effect. Um, in the areas in which the American military were present and, and conquering um, other countries. So I I think that I don't I don't want to stray too far away. I don't I don't think that it's necessary to um, say categorically that we should change all names. I don't I agree with Principal Okamura. I think that this is a really sensitive conversation that um, should be handled by the local communities, but I think the reason we brought it to the legislature was there were community members who felt like their sentiments were not being heard um, and that they had no other place to go. Like if there had been an active school community council with, with vibrant conversations about this and open to the public, inviting the public I, I think that part of this healing process is that we have this broader conversation because as the principal has said, and also as Chance has mentioned, this school has, you know, alum all over. And um, I think that those alumni, some of them are very influential, very, um, uh, I would say powerful people, and they have an opportunity as well to kind of weigh in and help 
us transition to a better future. I, I think that this is this is an invitation. This is an ask. You know, this is not telling the school what to do. It is asking them to re-examine this conversation and, and to think really in a compassionate way about the effect that a school name and a statue that commemorates someone who um, was really involved in genocide, what the impact that has on kids and on the community. Let me, um, let me I, I have got so many questions here. Actually, about half of them are not really questions. They're basically statements and, and I, I wanna honor them. So Jimmy says, I strongly oppose the McKinley High School name change President William McKinley is an important and positive part of Hawaii's history to become the 50th state of the Republic of the United States of America. There is absolutely no reason to change the McKinley High School name. On the other hand, um, a former McKinley substitute teacher says, I think the name should be changed. I think President McKinley goes down in Hawaiian history as a traitor to the Kingdom of Hawaii. We have a number of other ones along those lines. Um, Chance to oh, wow. um, how do you respond though to this idea that McKinley himself was such a bad actor in the in the scope of history that um, you shouldn't want to have your personal history wrapped up with his name. President William McKinley, um, in the scope of history throughout the Spanish American War, like Representative Peruso mentioned, and his um, part to play in the in the Philippines or in U.S history in the Philippines. Um, in actuality, President William McKinley didn't want to annex the Philippines at first, but due to pressures, because at the time in that part of US history, there is the imperialist versus anti-imperialist anti movement. Um, there was pressure on him to annex the Philippines and he sadly gave way to that. Um, and I mean, that, that brings me to another subject as to why the school, I think the school's name should be kept and why the statue should be kept. Because we, to me, um, I think it's a chance for us as McKinley graduates, alumni, students to live and thrive and to become educated in spite of McKinley's weakness, which eventually led to him um, moving in the U.S. into the Philippines. Um, let me, uh, Principal Okamura, I think maybe you can answer this question. A couple of questions about this process. Um, I'm a graduate of McKinley High School. I favor changing the name back to the original Honolulu High School. At the same time, I'm curious about the criteria or rules the Hawaii Board of Education uses in authorizing those school name change. Thank you for discussing this on the air. That was from William. Anonymous on Oahu, McKinley High School is on the preservation of American heritage list. Changing mm -hmm. the name may remove them off the list and put funding at risk. What, what is the process, you know, if it's not yeah. the legislature, what is the actual yeah. process? I was going to raise my hand and interrupt, <laughs> so, but um, there is a whole process. And 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 let me go back and do a little bit of little bit of history, right? Um, 2004, um, legislature passed Act 51, which is re revised to Act 221, and basically it gave decision making authority to the school uh, via the school community council, which we call the SEC. Um, process goes at any decision at the school level, you know, uh, that impacts the school. Uh, is made and approved by this school community council. Um, it's an open forum. You know, we have, you know, the agendas posted up. Um, and in December, we had our second meeting on basically on this uh, this topic of the name change. Um, whatever decision came about, you know, which was that it was unanimous that they didn't want to change the name or remove the statue, um, was sent, the letter was sent to the board and interim uh, superintendent, state superintendent Hayashi. And basically telling that, you know, the SEC has has, you know, denied any wanting to change a name or to remove the statue. And that was that is a process that's in place right now. So what's scary to me when you're looking at Act 51, there is a huge uh, implication um, for doing changing it by resolution and by um, by some kind of le other legislative act that you want to pick and choose certain aspects of the act. Act 51 and the SEC um, approves both the academic and financial plans of the school, which means that it looks at the programs, the instruction materials, um, equipment, whatever is being utilized in the school as part of the academic plan to meet the academic goals. Um, financially, 
Um, the school sets out a budget, basically looking at personnel, looking at equipment and supplies and, and other things that need operational. And how do we set that budget aside? Um, the school community council approves that as well too, as we pass it up before we pass it up to, um, you know, our district office for them to to approve, to look at and upload. So that's the process that we go through, and it, and the implications of taking away that authority um, from the SCC um, really has bigger impacts because now if we go back, and I'm old enough that I've been around be way before WSF was in in place. Um, with WSF is weighted student formula. And basically how teaching positions and monies were allocated to the schools is based strictly on per pupil population. Um, for secondary schools is 27 to one ratio. Um, for elementary in the K to one, or K to two was 20 to one. So, you know, we would lose that opportunities to utilize the budget monies that we have to purchase additional teaching positions. Okay, I think I, I see what you're saying. You're saying essentially this would be a costly process and we need every penny we can get. Right, and and just that it's that whole spirit of Act 51 about giving a ton decision making to the school level. And you know, um, when you look at all these things that are taking place around with name changes and things of different of aspects, and I'm thinking about football and the Washington football team right now. Um, it was really an internal decision okay. that made that happen. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta move on to other panelists, and I got a lot of questions here. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah. I want to give uh, Kainoa Azama a chance to respond to some of the things we just heard. Uh, do you, do you, do you feel like um, if you had the school make the decision, they would never change? And, and do you feel like this is actually more of a community issue than just an issue at, at the school and for that school community? I, I do think when it comes to the process, I think things have changed, you know, understanding our history, it's so important to understand context. And right now the context is we've gone through this process of true indoctrination amongst our communities. A lot of this information that is historically accurate on the understanding of the injustices that have happened are relatively new finds um, in terms of what's being taught. And um, even going to like earlier points about like um, what's being taught at the education level, you know, I'm a graduate of public um, school system too and modern Hawaiian history happens after annexation. And even for leading up to points to annexation, we get a book that, you know, we get a book and we're told to just kind of flip through and nothing's necessarily directly taught to us in detail unless you have a certain teacher and you're very um, fortunate to have one that teaches um, the true history of Hawaii. Um, so a lot of the context because there, when it comes to that context of indoctrination, we've developed these identities based on the settler story and the settler narrative. So, in, so there's going to need to be a lot of um, changes within the system that changes the conditions that allow us to make proper decisions in that matter. Because right now, the, we're, we're really seeing, even in this discussion, a lot of conflict amongst identity. So it is, for a large part, a part of the larger community that needs to, for me, in my opinion, get involved. Because those of us who have been fortunate and who do recognize this and do feel particular ways, even certain and students at the school having those stories that are shared to myself, even Representative Perusa um, in the community about, you know, wanting a difference to have more pride in their school because they love their school. And I'm, I'm going to read a real quick quote, um, my apologies, from a testimony from a student um, regarding the resolution last year. As someone who identifies as part Hawaiian, the school's name needs to change. Pride and tradition does not stem from just a name. It is because McKinley is a great school. And you know, that's thanks to um, Principal Okumura. And that's one of his students just sharing that they want to feel, they want to learn in a place with comfort. You know, and that's uh, what, you know what, Amy Peruso, you wanted to get in on this, but also, um, you know, you talk about, you know, not wanting to go down the road of this one and then this one and this one, but I'm getting a lot of conversation about different people who should be raised from the fronts of schools that says here, um, Claudia from Hilo says, the next schools to consider name changes are Sanford Dole and Wallace Farrington. You know, it's uh, it's hard to, to, to start this process and not end up doing exactly this, that. Right, I think that that's a legitimate point. Um, and I think those are important conversations, but those are not this conversation. So I, I really think that it's important that we focus because um, it's important to get it right. And if we um, try to address too much in this conversation, then we're going to lose like any 
real kind of grasp of what we're talking about. And I wanted to um, just quickly respond to uh, what Principal Okamura said about Act 51. And I appreciate that that's very important legislation for him. It mm -hmm. does grant him a great deal of autonomy, but I will still say that there is board policy that governs all schools. So schools do not act in a way that is completely autonomous. And their naming practices, for example, state that the name of a school facility shall be a unique identifier to identify the facility in other ways that bear a positive association for the school, school community, or public education. So I, I hear Principal Okamura, and I think that he is right, that this is a community conversation. But um, I think even school leaders, even school principals, bear a responsibility not just to the community but also um to the system they are part of the larger public school system and how they act in terms of following policy reflects on the whole system okay uh, chance uh a while well, uh, go ahead and I, I want you to talk a little bit more about that so go ahead um well i agree that with representative peruso that is important to stay focused on the topic of McKinney High School. I also have to admit that renaming Sanford B. Dole Middle School would make a lot of sense since Sanford B. Dole did play a huge role in overthrowing the Kingdom of Hawaii. Not to mention, he was also the first president of the Republic of Hawaii following the overthrow. So it's just my comments on that. Thank you. Uh, Principal Okamura? You know, and, and I'm just going to mention what happened last year at the resolution hearing um, when we were testifying. And, um, you know, it was made mention during that time that, you know, by, I, I think it was a representative from the Hawaii Teachers Union, that they really wanted to, their movement is to get rid of all the names of the schools um, that are named after people. Now, when I taught social studies, you know, the one thing I told, I told my students, and I still tell my students this today, um, is that you know people get named things get named after people who have done great things uh people get named things get named after people who are you know do, have, who have been did, did things that are being recognized in the community but every single person um that's has something named upon them has both good and bad um and hopefully that the good outweighs the bad that you know we honor these people because of who they are and what they've done for the betterment of the community. Um, president McKinley was a president of the United States and we got to recognize that, you know? Um, and like I always said, it's not about being President McKinley. We don't teach our kids to be President McKinley. We teach our kids to be good, good citizens who come from a place that has pride and tradition and basically is um, a very positive and prestigious brand name. Now, my issue have always been if you're going to change one you got to change them all and you know and and not by piecemeal if you're going to do it you do it all one time so let me let me let me let me ask uh, uh kainoa do, do you agree with that that really there should be a wholesale review of all of these these school names um and uh along the lines of if someone was a racist or involved in illegal activity or Fill out, fill in the blank. Um, that they should not have a school named after them. I, I would say, I mean, I don't want to try and represent a whole lot of people here. Like, there should be an open process where we can express our concerns. Like, how um, Representative Perusa was talking about earlier, coming back to this issue on McKinley, people didn't feel like their voices were being heard requesting the name change. The, so there's clearly a lack of a process. And if there is a process to be provided where a lot of more input can be provided, maybe we can right some wrongs that other people are feeling in other communities, because I'm not sure about how certain people feel about um, certain names of schools, even like Baldwin. And so, you know, there's so many that are ongoing and um, that's, I don't want to speak for those communities. I just, I do, so I would support a process though, opening it up for comment. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna read off some of these uh, viewer comments because they're they're thoughtful and and they are on both sides. So, um, Barbara and Honolulu, I don't agree with the name change. Uh, Julianne, a former McKinley High School teacher, it is is it not incumbent upon everyone to give due respect to those McKinley High School alumni for the past 157 years of their shared identity and bonding as McKinley Tigers? 
McKinley teachers, generations of families with McKinley past, present, and future shared values. Um, another uh, caller to Principal Okamura, you mentioned the so-called thousands of students and alumni. One of the hundreds of thousands of Kanaka who experienced deep-seated trauma over the illegal occupation of Hawaii on a daily basis. Do you agree, uh, Principal, that McKinley in particular is symbolic of the trauma? And, and how do you reconcile that with wanting to keep it up there? And have you been thinking about some way of mitigating that uh, messaging? Well, you know, and, and we've had various conversations about that because, you know, we've got to be sensitive to everybody, right? So one of the things that have been with the statue itself, and, you know, I've seen it with the, the Queen Ilo Kalani statue down, you know, down, down the road, um, that there was a plaque erected. Um, to kind of correct some of the, the misinformation that was that was written on that statue. Um, and that's something that we, we are more than happy to do. And also even looking at, you know, erasing, if that's the biggest issue is erasing and taking off and changing the, the treaty of annexation through the resolution. Um, you know, those are the stuff, things that, you know, we feel. But by removing the statue and, and taking away that piece of our, you know, this whose history, um, to me, I, 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 that'll be something that I'm truly against, um, you know, and like I said, everybody in history has, you know, the good and the bad. Um, you know, I, I remember when I was on Maui, um, there was a conversation when we had a new elementary school open up and it was named after a, a, a Hawaiian princess. And the community school community got really upset because some, you know, said, oh, this one, you know, she did a lot of great things. She was, you know, a princess. And yet the other part says, well, you know, it was kind of scandalous that, you know, we name in a school after someone who wasn't of the utmost, you know, representation. Um, but because we recognize her as, as royalty, as somewhat of importance, um, the name was kept. So, you know, I'm looking at that standpoint as well, too. Um, and I really think that, yeah, we need to we need to see, you know, what the feelings are about it. But by wholeheartedly just cutting, you know, you turn the baby out with the bathwater kind of thing. Um, that I'm, I'm truly against because it, it serves its purpose as, you know, some historical value um, for having said he was our president. OK, um, I'm just going to read a lot of these because there's so many and I really I'm impressed with the viewers and their uh, act activism on this in both ways. Um, Bill via Facebook, how can you be proud of a name set in racism and be Hawaiian? Just like Lee in the South, we must move on and embrace change. Um, Jimmy Roberts, there is nothing wrong with annexation. First Hawaii offered treaty, then McKinley persuaded Congress to agree to it. We, the people of Hawaii, are glad to be Americans. Thank you, President McKinley. Uh, let me ask Chance Nawal. Um, do you embrace that thought that part of this is whether you're proud to be an American or not? No, I don't. Um, part of that is because I'm still, uh, you know, I'm Hawaiian myself by the last name, of course. Um, but it's also for me, mainly with this is just being a McKinley High School alumni. Just having that sense of pride um, coming from this school, not just because, you know, the school's named after, you know, a president, but because of what this school represents and what it's done for me. It's made many lifelong friends for me, as many, as well as many other students, alumni, teachers, um, staff members, parents. And it's a community. It's a very tight knit community from what I've seen over the past year with the whole resolution thing that I feel should not be slighted by taking their identity away. Yeah. Okay. Um, Amy Peruso, you wanted to contribute at this point? I, I did want to jump in because I we keep coming back to this theme of um, the name, uh, the signifier, holding all of the power of identity. And I think that it's not the signified, it's not the same as the school. The name is not the same as the school. So it's just a name. I mean, that's, I will say like, if um, the name changed tomorrow to Honolulu High School, people would still understand that you came from this particular school with these particular traditions. 
and that you had had the leadership to help the community process these historical grievances. Um, and it would mean more, I think. Um, so I think that the, I'm saying two things at the same time, and they might seem contradictory. The, f the first thing I'm saying is that um, I think we might be giving too much power to a name because it, you seem to be saying that all of the identity is captured in the name. It's it's not the the thing that um, people seem to be emotionally attached to is the actual experience, the shared experiences of going to that school, um, being in those in those buildings, having those teachers, um, and I think that. You know, I taught at Mililani High School. If the name changed tomorrow, I would still have been a teacher at that school. Um, it doesn't change those experiences. So I know Principal Okamura has uh, something he'd like to add. Well, you, and also, uh, Principal Okamura, could you address this question from uh, the caller from Molokai? At the time the name was changed to McKinley, was that a proposal initiated by the students of the school? Or some other entity. That's a really fascinating question. I mean, if the I mean, if it, go, go ahead if you don't right. know the answer. To no, that. I, I don't know the answer for that one because that was way before my time. Um, but the site that McKinley High School is located on right now was never Honolulu High. It's always been McKinley High School. So when it got here, this is what McKinley High School was about. So I I don't know the answer for that one. Um, then I I I, am, I will feel uncomfortable answering it. Um, the one thing that I'm, I'm going to, you know, address Representative Peruso's uh, um, issue about the name, and this is coming from not only being the principal and, and an, a public educator, but also someone who was born and raised here in the islands. Um, a lot of our identity yeah, comes from where we graduated from. I tell the students all the time, you know, when, when I was growing up, and the first question everybody asks you is, where you grad from? Uh, and everybody in Hawaii who, grad from, who graduated here in Hawaii will tell you, I came from certain, certain high school. And that makes people look at you differently. They look at, they treat you differently. Um, it makes how you, who you are, you know, it's part of your, um, I guess, characteristics. So the interesting part about the name, um, coming from the neighbor islands, and when I went to UH, um, you know, one of the things we asked, you know, where'd you, you know, where'd you graduate from? And when someone said they're from McKinley, I mean, you really snapped the attention because it was, it was such a prestigious high school, you know, and, and the name is the brand. And I think by changing the name, you kind of take away some of that, 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 that prestigious status that we have. It's the same thing like, like Punahou. I mean, if Punahou was to change the name to Obama High. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, would that change, you know, Puna Ho's characteristics? Let, let me, uh, 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 Chance, when, when when I asked that question about how did the name come about, he, he raised his hand and Chance, do you know the, the, the story behind how the name came about? Because there's a couple theories here I'll share with you in a minute. <laughs> well, I apologize. I thought you were asking about um how the... <laughs> Um, the recent, you know, the request to change the name came about. Oh, okay. Let me let me let me read this. Uh, read these these questions. Um, first of all, um, one person points out trying to erase names and symbols from our history does not change the outcomes. Kara mm -hmm. um, versus Facebook. In Hawaii's case, the school was named after William McKinley to hide the truth about Hawaiian Kingdom from future generations. Another person, um, John from Kapolei, the reason it was named after the president was part of a propaganda plan to erode Hawaiian nationalism and teach children to be proper Americans. Um, uh, Kainoa Azama, do you concur with, with that? Did, did the impact of the school changing its name back then actually change the trajectory of people's understanding of what had happened um, during the overthrow? I do because we're having this conversation now too. In 1906 was when the program for patriotic exercises was implemented, which was to denationalize our people. And you know, the timing of the name change coincided also with the timing of the implementation of the statue is just so close together in our longer story of denationalization to disconnect to the place we come from and rather understand some place so far away over the sea that has now so much control over our islands today. 
um, th these larger this larger conversation is is we're living it. We've we're start we're really so many people have lost our identity, lost our ways of life as a result of that indoctrination that I had mentioned earlier. And over the time, over generations, now we've built a sense of identity that's not aligned with mahope mako oleli olani, but that we back the queen. But we're in this conversation about whether or not our identity relates to a name of an individual who has caused a great deal of injustice. And you know, going back to um, kind of our points about um, the education system and this impact today, going back to um, that testimony that I shared earlier from a student, clearly there's something and. Um, Representative Peru, so we've had, um, we've heard some interesting stories, even from about a football player, right? And um, that whole story about how he couldn't run as fast, you know, when he put the jersey on because of the name. So if we're not allowing individual excellence, we're not going to find um, collective resurgence. That's in our Olalo no Eaos, our understandings of our kupuna. Ilana kako i kaha oli o ha'e, we rise by uplifting others. So clearly there's, there, like I said over and over, we need a path to healing so that we can all collectively come together, um, not just um, with certain individuals, you know, kind of put to the side almost. Very well said. Let me um, uh, go to a number of people have proposed various compromises and other ideas. And so uh, let, me, let me go to some of those. Um, I'm okay changing the name. If I were to vote for a name, how Nani K. Trask would be my choice. No Honolulu High, that's lazy. That's uh, Chris from Kakako. And then um, another one says, uh, supports the name change and removing the statue, suggests naming next to Y High School after President Grover Cleveland. Who knows what's going to come out about Cleveland? <coughs> and so um, he mentioned should be about the students and alumni. Has there been a survey? Like, has, has there been any effort, uh, Principal Okamura, to, to get a sense of how the alumni feels? Because someone else says, you know, have the alumni make the decision. Um, what do you think would happen if you actually threw this out to the alumni? Or has that discussion been, happened? You know, and through the various, um, I guess, organizations that, uh, through the voices, one is the McKinley Alumni Association and the other one is the McKinley Foundation. Um, you know, they have strongly uh, supported not changing because this is, you know, their school, this is, you know, their their brand and their 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 connection to all the alumni. So discussions have been taking place because I do go to these meetings and, and and have conversations with them. And they, you know, go out and represent, you know, those, I guess, different um bodies of of, of alumni, both on the alumni association side and the foundation side. So they have been in the talks and then we've held different informational um I guess types of rallies. Uh, petition signings and and you know those the things of those nature. So they have an opportunity to come in. Let me uh, ask uh, Avery Peruso, Representative Peruso. We've we've done we had a lot of conversation about this or that, right? And and I think some people I wanted to just mention Papa from Kamoki says it should be called Patsy Mink High School, and um, another says Queen Lili Okolani, Lili Okolani High School. Well, that would be too close to my high school, which is Kalani mm -hmm. High School. But anyway, uh, what is where is the compromise here? Is there a compromise? Is there some way that you could see through to breaking this stalemate and also making some progress on this issue? Hmm. I think that's a really important question. Um, and maybe the answer is not about compromise, but it's more about ho'oponopono. Because um, I think that as a recent settler, um, I recognize the pain caused by these historical events and their current impact only because um, as part of my uh, further education at UH Manoa, I was fortunate enough to be exposed to the new scholarship that Kainoa was talking about. And I was fortunate to be on campus when you know, these new dissertations were being written. Um, the petitions were discovered. Um, I, I think that um, it, we need to have a broader conversation that is um, compassionate, not just for the, the Native Hawaiians who experience that name and that statue as a direct assault, um, but also for 
um, I think generations of settlers who, you know, they weren't taught the truth um, in their curriculum and it's not their fault. Uh, so it's, it, I think it's really important. I think reconciliation is about truth telling. The naming of schools should be about honor and integrity. And I think we, we are big enough to have that conversation um, in a respectful way and to do something different. We are capable of change. Let me um, uh, read this uh, and bounce it off of uh, Chance uh, Nawal. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity for a compromise. Keep the name McKinley, but drop the first name William and remove the statue and plaque. Um, do, do you see a place where you could compromise, where where you folks could still say you went to McKinley High School and 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 not have, um, say, the statue um, quite so prominent? Me personally, I don't. Um, but a compromise that I would definitely like to see, since um, Representative Peruso keeps bringing up how the curriculum doesn't exactly teach the full <clears throat> effects or the full story that President William, William McKinley and annexation had to play here in Hawaii. Um, I think that that would be a discussion definitely to have on the Board of Education, Department of Education level to make sure that's implemented into all public school curriculum to make sure we do know that history. Because personally, um, when I came to McKinley High School, I had a wonderful uh, modern Hawaii, Hawaiian history teacher. Um, her name was Miss Lam. I did get that. I did get that um, bit of history. Okay, um, let me ask uh, Kaidoa Azama, uh, where would you see compromise here? I mean, is there a, a way to do this? Can you, use, for example, use the statue as a teaching point and make that a regular theme? This is what's wrong about this statue. This is what McKinley did. This is how it fits into history. I mean, is it possible to use this as a teaching tool uh, in some form? I think the teaching tool is the, is the change itself. Um, that's what it is for me. Um, really, it, there's, like I was saying earlier, you know, there's this large memory that's present because we still live the injustice every day. We always have public lands issues, public lands, which were former crown and government lands that we witness being lost continuously, mismanaged, not under our control as a result of this denationalization. Um, so for me, it, it's, it's a matter of, you know, I, maybe we'll have a larger discussion for all other individuals too and we'll see kind of where everybody plays um, but for me personally um, the changes now um, in this time where there's so much as um, Representative Peruso said scholarship that's being renewed for our, our understandings um, and the opportunities now to give that next generation that foundation already. Um, uh, McKinley Principal that. Ron uh, Okamura uh, in the uh, one another suggestion in the talk of erasing the McKinley name, what of the erasure of Hawaiian place names throughout the Paiana schools should, should be named by place, not people. Um, first, I'd like to ask the same question I asked of, of the others. Do you see a compromise here? Do you see a place to go? Or is there something you could do at your school or your school could do to um, symbolically and realistically um, use this statue or the name of the school to um, help educate the community? It, it, we, you know, our classes, our social studies classes um, started doing this as far as looking at, because when the controversy came about, and it's been ongoing for, for quite a while now, at least as long as I've been here, um, that the name changed, they always wanted to change the name. Um, so our teachers, you know, some of them are using it as a teaching tool already to do the history of the, the school. Um, and, you know, they go out and, and to talk about and have discussions about, you know, McKinley as far as his role um, in Hawaii history, but also it's not only his role in Hawaii history, but his role in also in, in United States history. So it is a good teaching tool, like anything else, the good and the bad, because you got to look at both sides of, of every issue, and every topic um, to come up with the best information that you can and decisions that you can. Um, Compromise wise, I mean, I think to me it, it's hard because when you when you listen to those who are adamantly against um, keeping the name, it's get rid of it or nothing else. I mean, so my compromise is basic. When you look at um, 
what's happening around in, in our community. Um, there are a lot of statues that have been erected about different types of people, and then some of them are uh, historically inaccurate. And to make those corrections and use it as a learning tool, um, I think is important. And that, that would be a, a good compromise for us as well too. But keep the name, keep the statue, and, and let's use it as an educational learning tool. And let's keep the conversation going, everybody. It was very, very interesting, very enlightening. Thank you all so much for being on the show. And I want to thank our guests individually, Representative Amy Peruso and McKinley High School Principal Ron Okamura and Honolulu Youth Commission Chair Kainoa Azama and McKinley High School alumnus Chance Na'awau Ota. Next week on Insights on PBS Hawaii, it has been more than two months since fuel was first noticed in the tap water of military housing on Oahu. Thousands are still enduring the effects of the Red Hill fuel leak. What is being done to protect Oahu's water supply? Please join us then. I'm Daryl Huff for Insights on PBS Hawaii. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>